Cast your mind back 12 years ago to when you were a young child or for the teachers listening to this 45 years ago or probably even longer. You're lying in bed, tired after a long day of sandpit playing and spelling tests, but can't fall asleep just yet because you're still awaiting your bedtime story. You're asked which one you'd like tonight. Is it the very hungry caterpillar, perhaps the gruffalo, room on the broom, or we're going on a bear hunt? Well, you pick the one you've had read to you at least a dozen times that month and call it a night. So as I could see from some of your reactions to those titles, it's clear that the books we read as children stay with us. They're a fundamental part of our childhood. I work in a bookshop and often have grandparents approach me and ask for the books they used to read to gift to their grandchildren. Literature is something that can be passed down through generations and has the ability to unite people of all ages. But I believe children's literature, in particular, has a slight magical quality that is hard to find elsewhere. When a child reads a book, they take a piece of that adventure with them on their own adventure. I like to think they add it to their bank of stories and hold it close to them as they continue on through their journey. When a child reads a book, it's special. And from what I'm saying, it sounds like a pretty unproblematic, harmless thing that brings nothing but joy and nostalgia. At least that's been my experience with it, and I'm sure lots of yours too. But unfortunately, not everyone's. But before we even begin to examine some of the issues surrounding children's literature, why am I talking about it in the first place? Whilst, as mentioned, it brings a lot of joy, surely it can't be that important. Some of you may think children don't even listen to the stories that are being read to them, or do, but fall asleep before they're finished. I know this is what I thought for a while, but I quickly came to realise how vital literature is in a child's development of their understanding of their world. It's their first chance to form and develop opinions about what surrounds them every day, and has the power to nurture characteristics such as kindness, consideration, and awareness, and it's important to use that power in a beneficial way. So as I'll be focusing on picture books when speaking of children's literature as a, as a whole, I thought I needed to address the query that nearly everyone has when I've spoken about this topic before. So when I say picture books, the majority of people imagine a make-believe creature in a mystical world, as that genre does take up a lot of space in children's literature. And from the list I read out at the beginning, most were either about an animal or a make-believe creature. So I know what you're thinking. Why bother talking about diversity in picture books if most of them aren't even about real life? Well, this is the problem we have at hand. It's deeply concerning that in 2017, picture books were eight times more likely to feature an animal as a main character than a person of colour. And of the books that were about humans, people of colour only made up 15% of those books. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need literature about piano-playing porcupines, because we very much do, as they help widen children's imagination and act as a form of escapism. But it's evident that we need more books about real-life situations, and specifically, more inclusive books. The mirror, window, and sliding glass door theory illuminates the many functions that children's literature has when used in a positive way. When a story is read to a child, it has the ability to act as a mirror. They should be able to see themselves in the tales they hear like a mirror, reflecting an image of yourself back to you. But unfortunately, it's a privilege for many children to see themselves represented in the books they read. Say a child with a disability continually has books being read to them that they're not able to relate to. How do you expect this child to view themselves? Perhaps as someone not normal? or capable of the successes that the able-bodied protagonist gets every time. It's equally important for literature to act as a window for young children. It should enable them to see a life different from their own, perhaps as someone practicing a different religion than themselves. Understanding the need for difference in the world is something that should be taught from an early age, and what better way to do this than through reading? If children are only exposed to lives that are similar to theirs, how can they be expected to celebrate or even understand difference in the world? And finally, 
literature has the ability to act as a sliding glass door. All children should have the right to see the characters they aspire to be like and one day can be like. It should inspire them to be brave and to know that they can do or be anything. They should be able to see the character they want to become, slide open the glass door, and step into the reality. But unfortunately, this wonderful theory does not play out for a lot of children. To help you get a sense of how diverse literature currently is, in 2019, a mere 3.4% of protagonists had a disability. If that statistic isn't shocking enough, it's even more concerning when you're aware that 18%, which is over 7 million people in the UK, identify as disabled meaning that millions and millions of children did not or have not seen themselves represented in the books they read. And in 2019, the Cooperative Children's Book Centre took in 3,717 books and only 45 of them, which is 1.2%, were tagged with a Muslim diversity subject. It should be deeply concerning to you all that the oldest part of this data is from five years ago. However, it's undeniable that things have changed. Even when I was being read to, mainstream bookshops now stock inclusive books and specialist bookshops such as Gay as the Word and Hausman Books are gaining popularity. But even now in today's society where speaking up is encouraged and monumental change is happening, we're still calling books that feature an LGBTQ plus character or a person of color diverse. They shouldn't be known as diverse books. They should just be books. And the only way to do this is through normalizing such books. Diversity in picture books in the past has often just been based on the character being from, from a minority background or them overcoming an issue they faced as a result of it. And it's only seemed to focus on one aspect at a time, say, being gay or being neurodivergent. What if you're both? that's simply too much to ask from just one book? Children need to see characters of all kinds engaging in everyday situations and as more than a one-dimensional representation of the particular minority group they might belong to. So, at the beginning, I read out a list of titles that we read and loved as children. But pictured above me are only a fraction of the many incredible books that can be found in mainstream bookshops that celebrate, educate, and normalize diversity in an accessible way. So you won't be surprised to discover that literature as a whole, like many other things, still has a long way to go. There are still many authors that deserve their rightful place next to the 25 other Julia Donaldson books that sit on the shelf. There are still many parents that won't go for that one because the author doesn't have an English sounding name. And sadly, there are still many children that will feel other or different because they see more books about a make-believe creature than they do themselves. But here's the thing, you can help. It's as simple as this. Buy inclusive books. They don't even have to be children's books, they can be any books. And whether this inclusivity is represented by the author, the themes, the publishing company, or even the bookshop itself. So, I hope that in the future, if and when we have children of our own, we're able to provide them with the picture books they deserve, where they see themselves and others in the pages they turn and strive for a more equal world where everyone gets the ending they deserve. Thank you. <laughs>